Hi everybody, welcome to video 10 of chapter 3. So in this video we start to look at theoretical aspect of the simplex method. We will um, put it in the abstract a general setting and summarize the theorems. Okay, so let's get started. So the algorithm start with the uh, um, and LP problem in canonical form, so that's the starting point of the whole algorithm. So we shall still remember what does it mean that a linear programming problem is in canonical form. Okay, so it's in in this box here. So we call this problem I. We put a label to this problem. Later we'll just refer to it as problem I. We want to minimize Z with the following. So here the first M equation are the M constraints, and the last one is the objective function. So we know that for a linear prob uh, programming problem to be in canonical form, it needs to satisfy three conditions. Number one is the constraint, the set of equation for the constraint shall be in canonical form, okay? Meaning you should have a set of basic variables. Here is x1, x2, and xm. They are written here in a diagonal form because all the other coefficients in the other equation are zero. And then there's a set of non-basic variables from xm plus 1 to xn, and then has a right-hand side. Okay, That's the first part. And the second part is the um, objective function shall be expressed in terms of the non-basic variables. So you see the objective function, which is z here, is expressed in terms of xm plus 1 to xn, so a linear combination of the non-basic variables, and a z0, which is just a constant, a number. And the third part is the basic solution should be feasible, which basically requires all the b's here on the right-hand side to be non-negative. Okay. So let's see. Um, we have that m is the number of constraints, n is number of variable, and we assume n is strictly bigger than m. Okay, and uh, what I typed here are summaries of what I just said. So for the canonical form, we just relabel the variables such that the first m of them are basic variables, and then the remaining is the non-basic. And the basic solution, the feasible solution, would be and the xi is just bi for i from 1 to m. And then the other xi's for the non-basic variables, they just take value zero. Okay, xi's will be zero for i bigger than that. And at that basic solution, z would take the value negative z naught because the left hand side is zero. Okay, so we're familiar with that. Okay, let's see. Starting from that, and uh, we'll develop an algorithm. Now let's first take an example where um, optimality is reached, and we'll have some discussion on that. So look at this following example. We want to minimize z with the following. So we have four variables, x1, x2, x3, x4. They're all restricted. They're always bigger than or equal to zero which is assumed, so I do not list that, okay, but that's understood. And then here we see the first two are the constraints, and the third one is the um, objective function. For the constraint equation, we see that x1, x2 serves as the basic variables, and this is in canonical form, and it's feasible, and the objective function is expressed in terms of the non-basic variable. So this LP problem is in canonical form per our definition. Okay, so um, if it's in canonical form, we can write out the feasible solution. That is, the basic variables x1, x2 would take the value of right-hand side, 2 and 6. 
and the num basic one xx 3x4 are just zero so that's the solution and then at that point or at that solution the z would just take value negative 30 it's just move 30 to the other side okay then the question is is that the smallest z can get is that the minimum well we will take a look at the objective function so we note that in the objective function the left hand side the expression here for both terms x3 and x4 the coefficients are positive 2 and 5 they're just numbers as long as they're positive we'll have the same conclusion okay so let's rewrite this in the following so move the 30 to the other side and then we have z equal to this and then we know that x3 x4 up to variables that are restricted so they're bigger than zero and then based on that we can conclude that z shall be bigger than equal to negative 30 it cannot be smaller than it because otherwise this will not make any sense okay so what does that mean Okay, so now during our simplex algorithm calculation, we can terminate the process and say that optimality is reached. And once the criterion is satisfied, and that is all the CI, the coefficients in the objective function, is non negative. Okay, so. Um, that's all for this video and I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.